All right, it's all synced. What's up, everybody? The Poets here. And you see a bit of chaos going on here. And actually, this is going to be a video that has been, oh my god. Um, it, uh, let's just say it's taken me pretty much all of 2020 to do this video. So I'm happy to finally knock out the Optimus water block for Threat River 3 comparison to the EKWB Velocity water block. So for those that don't know, um, geez, back in 2019, I pre-ordered, and I was fine with pre-ordering, I know what happens with pre-ordering, uh, the Optimus water block. And um, because Threader for 3 generates heat, you know, 32 cores, 64 threads, um, I wanted to make sure that Deep Blue here had the optimal <laughs> uh, cooling ability in order to, you know, uh, help me with my overclocking, video editing, all that stuff. So obviously the virus hit, they had supply chain issues, but their communication was pretty good. And I was very understanding with the situation. So basically over time, they finally were able to uh, send me the finished water block for Optimus. And it was disappointing at first because one, they didn't have <laughs> directions. So I'm assuming it should be mounted a particular way, um, but no, lo and behold, you needed to use the torque wrench, and this is the Threadripper 3 packaging, not your average, you know, packaging by any means. So your Threadripper 3 is going to be in here, and then it actually does come with a torque wrench, so that as you're clamping down the, the CPU, you are turning this and then finally it'll click when it's had enough tor torque or you know pressure on the screw so i had no idea you're supposed to use this for their optimus water block as well first time i've ever seen that happen where you needed a torque wrench to apply a cpu water block so i have plenty of tools that fit their you know their block mechanism and everything so i just use my own um, but in the process, it appears that I didn't have enough pressure, plus the actually mounting screws weren't actually mounted correctly, all right? But that's what happens when there's no directions. Now, I don't really fault them for all that because yes, COVID hit, they had supply chain issues and they were trying to rush things out. So maybe just, you know, slip through the cracks or whatever. But when you're paying twice as much for a product, you would hope that, you know, they would supply some of the basics. So it was kind of like a live and learn type of thing. Um, one thing that I was really pleased about was just their communication. So when they saw the error, um, like we, we had a lot of back and forth going and um, they were able to actually show me the diagrams and stuff for their new directions that they're including. So my poor old Gigabyte Aorus Master, the TRX40 motherboard, through mounting and unmounting, mounting and unmounting, had a mounting screw literally pop off. Uh, so I had to RMA it and Gigabyte took five weeks for that RMA process. So obviously during that time I'm, you know, running off of uh, some older, you know, stuff I have laying around and video editing on. And 8700K for 4K takes like two hours for my videos when it would take like 15 minutes for this. So I missed it. Um, but I digress. Um, look at me, Chase Two Cents here. So what I'm trying to say is that I kind of got to know the people at Optimus through this process and they did offer, I can't even get this on now. Um, I asked them if, get on there. I can mount a CPU water block, but I can't get a box on. So um, I basically you know, said, hey, if you guys have other things you would like me to test, um, I'd be happy to. And so they sent me, so this is all full disclosure before I get into the results. Uh, they sent me this um, Optimus Pump Res Combo Unit, which huh, um, I guess they could have sleeved, but I'm going to do a review on these. Uh, they did send me some hardline fitting uh, tubings. These are interesting and almost deserve their own video. But what I thought was funny, they did include the, uh, the tool that I need to uh, apply that. Um, they also supplied me with another review unit of, oh, not this one. This is what the um, uh, CPU water block for the Threadripper 3 kind of looked like. But this one here, uh, they give me another one to review. So this is um, gonna be put on my 8700K system. So these are all um, given to me for review. All right, so I wanted to put that out there along with um, some of the tops here. So 
now that I have that out the way, and they did come with mounting directions as well, good stuff. So let's get into the data comparing the EKWB Velocity Water Block with Red Ripper 3 to the Optimus Water Block now. So my first runs of Cinebench R20 were stock on the EKWB Velocity Water Block and the maximum temperatures for the CPU, the T-Dive, was 78.3 degrees and the CPU die average was 70 degrees, and this is Celsius, obviously. So for the CPU T-Dive, compare that 78.3 to actually 70.4 was the max temperature on that uh, Optimus water block with Red Ripper 3. So that's an improvement of almost eight degrees Celsius. Um, for the CPU die average, 70 versus 61.3 for the Optimus. So that's about 8.7 degrees Celsius improvement. So that's very, very impressive. And then some of the T-Dye, or, or some of the CCDs, um, they range from, uh, let's see, as little as four degrees improvement up to 12.2 degrees improvement. Uh, in terms of Blender benchmark for the EKWB Velocity Water Block, um, that ran for 50 minutes for three runs, and this is Blender 2.83. So for the EKWB Velocity Water Block, that was 72.6 degrees for the CPU T-Dye. For uh, the Optimus Water Block, it was 69.8. So about a 2.8 uh, degree improvement. And then the CPU die average for EK was 71.7, where it was 65.3. So that's about a 6.4 degree improvement. So uh, an improvement across the board. When it comes to PBO actually being on, because those are stock results, Cinebench R20 with PBO on for the EK, uh, maxed out at 79.8 degrees for both T-Dye and, and CPU die average. For the uh, Optimus water block, it was 75.5 uh, for the same for T-Dye and CPU die average. So that was an improvement of about 4.3 degrees Celsius. And then for Blender version 2.83, EK had a maximum temp of 82.3 degrees for T-Dye and 82.6 degrees for CPU die average, uh, where it was just 78.8 degrees and 78.7 degrees respectively for the Optimus water block. So that's an improvement of about 3.5 and 3.9 degrees Celsius. So basically what we see here is on stock settings for Cinebench R20, uh, the Optimus water block gave me almost an eight degrees Celsius improvement. Um, and that's noticeable. Uh, that allows me to do further overclocking as well. So I am pleased with my purchase with the Optimus water block. Um, it's a shame it took pretty much all of 2020 to get to this point, um, but I am really impressed with the Threadripper 3 processor in general. Um, it, it saves me so much time in 4K video editing. I can do a lot of gaming on this as well. Uh, playing Flight Simulator 2020 with the Vega 64 video card uh, in it as well, uh, which I do plan on upgrading sometime soon, waiting for reviews and benchmarks for everything else that's coming out this year. But Optimus, um, they, they lived up to the claims of improving greatly over the EKWB Velocity water block. So I'll take an eight to nine degree temperature improvement all day long, you know, just from swapping out a water block. So that's pretty much it. Um, stay tuned for more testing, obviously from Optimus. Um, I have more testing actually for the Threadripper 3. I have some projects going on, as well as a second system that I'm working on here. Uh, I do have a surprise from a manufacturer. They said I can finally release some of this information very, very soon. Uh, so looking forward to that. So that's pretty much it. EK versus Optimus. Optimus won out and um, hey, let me know if you have any comments, questions, all that stuff. Hit me up on Twitter, TikTok, uh, all the social medias. Like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Stay safe out there. Peace.